Well, we certainly haven't been shy in bringing you info re some of the Japanese imports that are hitting our streets. Mazda's Series 8 RX-7 was a big hit when released to our market as a new car, and since being reintroduced as an import very recently, fans have taken advantage of these classic performers and snapped them up. A high performer that never quite made it to our shores as a newie was Nissan's awesome Skyline. I was very impressed with the mild-mannered four-door version we tested some time ago, and equally impressed with a very highly modified example a couple of months ago. Well, both very good high-performance examples, their respective fans passionate about their individual attributes. Rotary lovers bragging about the 8, 9 or even 10,000 RPM available, while the Nissan gang constantly ramming home the success of the Godzilla. Of course, both of these units arrive in Oz as low-kilometre, fully-optioned examples, so they also provide an excellent all-round driver. But today it's time to back-to-back -to -back them. Mazda's Bathurst Type R RX-7 versus the Nissan R34 GTT braking, acceleration and handling under our microscope. So let's check out the specs we have to work with. The RX-7 hosting rotary powered 13B twin sequential turbocharged, 206 kilowatts, a 1260 kg waistline, five speed 16 inch rubber on this version with four piston front and two piston rear calipers wrapped around the four wheel disc brakes. The Skyline matching the Mazda in the brake specs but almost 200 kgs heavier at 1440. Both protagonists, rear wheel drive, the Nissan power plant, a 2.5 litre six cylinder single turbo, again the mandatory maximum Japanese spec of 206 kilowatts. Straight line speed and exhilarating factor in both machines, the Skyline boasting 6.2 on the zero to 100 test and 14.6 quarter mile time. The RX-7 grabbing the weight advantage over the 100 clicks, slipping into the fives with 13.8 on the strip. Well, that's it for the straight line stuff. Let's get some circle work happening. Now, on paper, the RX-7 should be the business. Low to the ground, a heap of grunt, and very good balance. With both runners featuring double wishbone and multi-link combinations, the centre of gravity, engine placement and weight were all contributing factors. The bigger and longer Skyline struggling a little, especially with understeer on the sweeping corner manoeuvres, but redeemed itself tackling the slalom, the stiffer shock setting allowing for good close quarter turn in and exit. The Bathurst Star easily better on the longer corners and although softer and slightly spongier through the cones, still very predictable. The low CG and excellent balance making even the aggressive power moves very comfortable and controlled but requiring much more RPM, hence wheel spin. The Skyline very much liking the aggression, lower RPM via better low down torque and both examples struggling with the open rear ends as expected. Well, both very good examples, but for me, I'm a big fan of the balance, precision and smooth power delivery of the Mazda. In the dollars department, starting with the Mazda, the Series 8 started about $55,000. In this particular case, the Bathurst Type R, believe it or not, this thing's only done 700 kilometres from new. It's going to set you back about $79,500, which interestingly is $10,000 cheaper than they were new in Australia in 98. In the case of the Nissan, the R34s, about 40 grand is your start mark. You can get them from 98 models all the way to 2000, and there's a heap of different specs to choose from. 